Hello, I'm just going to jump in here and create some guides for XGen, but I'm going to use a tool, uh, a script that I wrote specifically for that, just to make the process a little bit easier. And finally, I got to it. I'm pretty happy with the results. So uh, I'm going to start by just using this blob that I created in ZBrush real quick, just to have something to sculpt on, uh, or sorry, paint my guides on. And I'm going to use this GF Curve on Mesh. Uh, it's a tool by someone other than me. I wish I could pronounce the name. Guilaume Ferrachat. Uh, I'll put a link to the tool, and it's great. And uh, I'm not sure if it works in Maya 22. I don't think this uh, tool that I'm sharing right now is going to work in Maya 22 quite yet. But if there's interest, I can maybe accommodate for that. But for now, it works in Maya 20. And uh, I, I'd assume uh, 21 and 19 and maybe 18 will work as well. In any case, uh, I'll start by quickly making some curves on surface here. And you can use paint effects uh, to do it instead of uh, the tool that I'm using now. And basically, what's nice about this approach is I get to, I get to basically create a very artistic looking and feeling uh, hair, or the process at least, is very artistic looking and feeling. And I can come in here and start adding some curves. Now, perhaps in some situations, like here, you can see that sometimes the angle of the camera is affecting how well uh, I can make my curve uh, work with what I'm doing. But even if you can't accomplish everything in one angle, it's still, I think, considerably faster of a workflow than uh, shaping guides inside of XGen. So here I'm just going to keep my spacing of my roots somewhat reasonably evenly spaced out. I don't care about it uh, fully because I can always adjust the spacing later inside of XGen. So I'm just kind of going over this and slowly adding more and more hairs going uh, back from the front of the head. I'm just filling the root section, making sure that my roots are going all the way across. Again, it's not maybe the not maybe the most uh, TLC I've given to a hair, but just to give you an idea of what the tool can do. So let's say, let's just do the whole thing. I'm just going to go real quick. Just to demonstrate as well how fast this is, because I think this approach is better than uh, going in by hand and using the limited sculpt brush inside of uh, XGen. And what's nice about using these guides later on is we can use them for controlling our clumps as well. So let's say something like this. We have something like this. That's wonderful. And I'm thinking for the rest of the hair, we can just use, um, we can generate the rest of it in XGen. So I don't think we need to separate those. OK. So let's select, uh, let's hide our blob. And as you can see right now, like it's looking pretty cool uh, in the way that, you know, we have a volumetric representation of hair. That's kind of cool, right? But we're not having the roots attached to the scalp. So what I'm going to do first, I'm, I'm going to use Tuber here just to rebuild all of these curves. And then I'm just going to do some quick editing. Like here, we have a line that goes straight, which is not uh, great. So I'm going to rebuild them to maybe 40 points each. And I'm using the tool just so I have a batch. Whoops, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I want to rebuild. So I'm, I'm using the tool just to have a batch, um, a way to batch uh, process all of these together. And you see Maya creates some uh, artifacts. So I'm going to come in here and smooth a couple times maybe. And that's why I'm using a higher number is to help me with a uh, problem that might pop up. Let's 
see if I rebuild them. Okay, there we go. So that's fine, I think, mostly. Like, it's not perfect, and we can totally take some of these hairs and kind of randomize the tips a little bit better. Like, some of these are very... They're all kind of sitting on the same plane. We can totally do that uh, later. Yeah, but I don't have like a quick way to <laughs> I don't have a quick way to randomize uh, these points, but I, I think it's just easily done in uh, side of XGen. Anyway, so the basically what I'm showing you here is this part where I'm just gonna use the script to snap these to my uh, head that I created. Uh, the script comes like this. There's a bit of an explanation here what it does, but it's just you just run the whole thing all at once. One thing that we need to create that we haven't yet is just a transition curve, just something to help the tool figure out how to transition between the two. So I'm going to create a curve, and I don't care really what's the technique here. I just want this um, transition to be proportional to the length of my curve. So I can select the rest of my points here, just make sure it's nice and flat. And what I'm going to get from using this, it's gonna smooth it a little bit. What I'm gonna get by using this kind of transition, I'm gonna smooth it a bit more, is the way these curves will snap to my he head geo. Now this one, I wanna have the word uh, transition in the name, and that way the script will know um, Oops. That it is not part of our uh, snap curves. So transition. I think I wrote it correctly. Yeah, nice. And you don't need the underscore. It's just for me, for uh, so it doesn't look messy. So I have my target geometry. It could be the head, or it could be uh, this hair cap. And I'm just gonna run the script. So I'm just selecting everything, uh, running, and you can see what it's doing. think it's pretty clear. So what's nice about that and the transition that I created, it's mostly abrupt in the beginning, but gets uh, kind of more subtle as we go forward. What it creates is a more natural looking uh, structure of the hair, right? And now uh, if we want to create a new uh, description, for this hair cap and maybe using guys, I'm just gonna give it a name. Uh, so let's do that, let's select our curves, make sure we're not selecting anything else, and I'm just going to use my utilities and create some guides out of those. I'm going to hide them, I should have clicked on hide there, but I did not. So now we can just jump in here, increase the number of points, as well as maybe get the width a bit lower. Of anti-aliasing, and then maybe get get a bit of a f uh, taper towards the end. Just give it a bit of a nicer quantity. Maybe come in here and introduce uh, some clumps. You can see we have <laughs> some issues here with where the hair is growing, but it's very easy to fix, right? So I can come in, uh, maybe add a uh, clump modifier, and use our guides. Uh, as the guides of our clumps, which I think helps quite a lot. And then maybe like a cut modifier real quick. Again, I'm not really doing anything too fancy here, but just, just to give you like a quick result. And then maybe come in here and... Um, oops, my distribution. Then maybe paint uh, mask here. Right, and maybe paint something, you know, just get a, a bit of a something like this, and just maybe just remove some of that, uh, some of those white values, and see what we get.
And by uh, painting holding control, we can actually get the opposite color. Might have been actually a better idea to just uh, fill the object with black and then go from there. But I'm just gonna hit save. And you can see that we're getting something pretty good pretty fast, right? It's not perfect, but you know, perfection doesn't exist. Control points, and we can start controlling this stuff and getting a bit of a better result. Maybe uh, randomizing some of this, adding a bit of noise or modifiers. But just, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's basically what I wanted to show.